Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and of course this is uh, this is my furry friend uh, Shackleton, the explorer, and he's very mellow today, in a good mood, very complacent. I think he's a bit hungry, so I'll have to give him some food. He always seems to be hungry these days. So, in the last video, I talked about how the loss of uh, ice on Greenland is an extremely concerning thing. We just set a record amount of ice loss last year, 532 gigatons, which is an enormous amount of ice. And I also talked about the staggering loss of ice on planet Earth in the last uh, decade, two, dec two and a half decades, last 23 years, actually uh, 28 trillion tons of ice loss. And, uh, you know, in our warming world, in our, in our greenhouse gas uh, fueled uh, abrupt climate change world, we're just losing more and more ice. And this is a huge latent heat factor because it takes a lot of energy to melt ice. And when the ice is not there, all that energy can go into raising the temperature significantly. And uh, just one uh, fact. Uh, if you have a kilogram of ice and you put in a certain amount of energy to melt that ice, then you take that same amount of energy and apply it to the water just above the freezing point, the kilogram of water, it would raise that temperature of that kilogram of water to 70 degrees Celsius. So you can see, you know, when there's ice on the planet, it keeps the temperature, the air temperature just above the ice pegged at, uh, the melting point, just above the melting point of the ice, when the ice is no longer there, then the sensible heat kicks in as opposed to latent heat and the temperature can rapidly rise in that region. In this video, I'm going to, you know, as we approach the minimum of sea ice, Arctic sea ice extent, which is usually about mid-September, um, I'm gonna talk about um, some of the factors that we're seeing where it's going to be a toss-up. We could break the 2012 record, but it's going to be very, very tight. It's going to be a clear second place if it doesn't break the previous minimum of 2012. But as opposed to 2012, when the ice remaining was all solid, we basically have a, a, a sea of ice cubes. And it would be very interesting, actually, if we had enough resolution to actually just count the area of the ice cubes and see what that total area is because there's an awful lot of open water in between these ice cubes and we don't really have a you know high enough resolution from the satellite in, uh, data to to actually show that i mean anything with 15 percent ice or more is counted in extent for example the concentration uh, being a hundred percent near the north pole well we had the mosaic ship up there and clearly it's not a hundred percent although the the HICOM satellite data shows that, and also if we look at the world view, um, you can see how fractured the ice is. So I'll look at all of these things, but the key focus is on that I'm going to look at is is the melting of the ice from below, because generally in the Pacific and the Atlantic, as you go deeper in the water, you get colder, and there's a thermocline where the temperature plummets below that thermocline. But in the Arctic, it's a bit different. You have the fresher water, so less salty water on the surface. That makes it lighter and it's very cold. Down below, you know, you have uh, saltier Atlantic water, but it's warmer. It's actually a few degrees above zero. And the melting point, of course, of, of, uh, of uh, melting freezing point of sea ice, you know, when the, the salinity is 35, um, PSU or 3.5% salt content is minus 1.8 Celsius. So the water, the, the separation of this water, the fresher lens of water under the ice, you know, that, that helps to keep the ice there because it keeps the heat down below. But what's happened is, and typically, you know, it would be about a couple hundred meters um, where the warmer Atlantic water is. But what's happening, I'll talk about some recent papers where that are showing that that barrier that thermal barrier is being broken down and the Atlantic water warmer down below is coming closer to the surface and in fact in some regions it's coming near the surface it's more like about 60 meters down instead of a couple hundred meters down 
and it has amount the it has enough heat energy to melt the take out all of the sea ice four times over. So as this is shoaling, it's very serious, and it tends to be shoaling in areas of the Barents Sea, for example, and it keeps those areas ice free even throughout the winter months. So so this is adding fuel to the fire to the idea that um, we're, we're you know when we have a blue ocean event. And when we have decrease of sea ice through other months of the year, we'll eventually have it year-round, and it'll be maintained by the very, very warm water um, from, from the, the Atlantic water, basically. And this process is the Atlantification of the Arctic. So I'll go into the papers and talk about all these details. And I've also been researching um, atmospheric rivers and the potential to completely inundate the Central Valley of California, um, as happened in 1862, 1861, 1862. Um, and that'll be my next series of videos. This is, that's just a heads up. So, so let's get right to the, to the uh, Arctic uh, situation. So I'll come back to this worldview image, but this is north of Greenland. And this is, the, this is cloud cover in here. So, so you can see the uh, but the, the area under here shows the fractured sea ice. It shows all of the broken up ice and the water gaps between. And uh, the uh, Mosaic expedition found that this continued right up to the North Pole. But I'll get to that in, in sequence. So first of all, um, this is my blog, paulbeckwith.net. Uh, please uh, donate to my PayPal account. PayPal account to support my work on this, uh, my research and efforts. I've got, I don't know how many hundreds of videos, 600, 700, 800, who knows, 15 minute videos. Go to my YouTube channel and just search for any topic you want on climate change and you'll find it there. So my last blog uh, was talking about the persistent jet stream ridge blocking high over Greenland that we're often seeing in low sea ice years and that caused record loss 532 gigatons of ice in greenland was lost and that surpassed the previous record melt year in 2012 when the sea ice set a record low by 15 percent so we've got a couple weeks at least you know uh two to three weeks possibly uh left um if the uh you know in this in the um reduction of arctic sea ice and we're very very close to breaking this record is going to be a toss-up like i say if you go to my Twitter, please follow me at Paul H. Beckwith on Twitter. And, uh, you know, this was the, the blog about the record high Greenland melt. And here's where we are. This is Zach Labe, for example. Here's where we are in 2020. Um, we've just gone under uh, 4 million square kilometers extent. And we were only, we dipped under in 2019 and 2020 set the record. Here's where we are heading down. So, you know, I bet that we won't break, set a new record with a friend of mine. And I also bet that the ice, the, the minimum will occur on or before September 21st. And he's taken the, the opposite on, on both, of those, uh, both of those things. Typhoon, of course, uh, you know, in other news, the typhoon Haishen is heading right to Japan. It'll be, it'll, it's, it's a huge super typhoon. It's expect to graze across western japan on sunday strongest typhoon of 2020 you know as we, you know we, they call them typhoons there you know as opposed to hurricanes um you know we just had hurricane laura of course impact the the u.s significantly a lot of people have downplayed it but it did cause significant damage and so on so so check out my twitter feed if you haven't this is uh earth null school showing the air the surface winds and this is at the present where where the typhoon is and if you cycle through uh, the projections in a day it'll be there a couple days there and then over, it'll be here on September 6 just grazing the s southern region of of Japan now Remember, because it's low pressure, air high pressure comes in, deflects to the right of the northern hemisphere, comes this way. So when the typhoon is moving here, okay, you have the 
the, the rotation speed plus the forward speed. So this is the most severe damage region. So there's going to be severe implications, you know, as it clips the southern uh, part of Japan and then moves uh, moves ashore. So very very significant storm. Um, this is the my uh, Facebook uh, uh, page, and I just want to point out some of the stuff I've been conversing with a friend, um, my, my friends Matthew and Martin. Um, this is an image of, uh, I have a fitness tracker and I was just bragging a little bit about, I've lost 10 pounds of weight in the last month, my resting heart rate has dropped and, and uh, this is uh, my resting heart rate um, from my uh, Garmin Fenix 5X device, which I love. It's a really motivator for getting in, getting fit, and I'm a believer of some something called intermittent fasting. But anyway, this is my resting heart rate last night, and I reached a minimum of 44. Um, so as I exercise more and eat more, eat better, and so on, you know, it's much better for dealing with it, stress levels um, and uh, so on. So, um, but one of the things is I have all, I'm, ha I'm putting all these projects together for, for my house. I'll talk a bit more about it in a minute. But in terms of the Arctic, this is the sea ice. This is a map recently, University of Bremen shows the sea ice thickness. And we've only got the greens and yellows here. So 20 to 30 centimeters. 30 centimeters is a, is a foot of uh, ice thickness. So we've got a third of a meter, a foot of ice thickness. There's only a couple regions where there's any ice thicker. So basically, all of the thick ice is gone. Um, and uh, so this is a friend I'm betting. He's saying we're going to beat 2012. I don't think so. Uh, but there's um, 595,000 uh, 595,000 um, kilometers of extent between now and the minimum that we need to lose. 20 days left, it's 30k a day. If it's 15 days left, it's more like uh, 40k a day. And how much did we lose recently? Um, let's go back up here. Okay, so September 1st, we lost 196. Wow. 196,000 square kilometers. We lost 60, 105, 83. All these numbers are well above the, the 30 or 40 that we need to lose in order to beat the record. So it's looking like I might lose that bet, but I like losing some bets occasionally. I predict a minimum. Um, he, my friend, he predicts a minimum around September 25th um, with a new record. And I'm thinking, you know, September 21st, and uh, I don't think it'll break 2012. So it probably will, but I like losing some bets occasionally. So this is uh, the sea ice edge. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's surpassed 85 degrees north on uh, the uh, Russian, the Eurasian side. Okay, uh, you know, so it is definitely, it's looking smaller. You know, it's looking in worse and worse uh, shape. Uh, this is just an image of my backyard. There's all of this cedar. Um, I'm actually, um, I actually took off an old deck because I have a leak on a flat roof. Don't put a deck on a flat roof is the moral of that story. And I'm using some of the wood to replace, uh, you know, some old steps at the back of the house. So I ripped those off and I'll replace th those with, uh, some of my new cedar, which new cedar, well, cedar from the, from the deck up top. Okay, so I find there's not, nothing beats, for dealing with stress, nothing beats nice physical exercise, pure physical exercise outside, outdoors. Um, this is something to keep watch of. I have mentioned this before. This is the, the German, the DMI um, temperatures north of uh, you know, uh, north of 80, 80 degrees or 85, I don't remember, but it shows you that, you know, look at this spike here. This is very unusual. Enough sea ice was lost that the temperature went above um, the, uh, went above, above the melting point of the ice, and here it's extended. So this is extremely serious. Thanks for listening. I'll continue in a series of videos. Thanks again.